Hey everyone, I'm Representative John Hansen, and for the last eight years that I've been serving in our state house, I, along with some other great conservative allies, have been advancing the cause for South Dakota families. We've passed laws here in South Dakota to protect your religious liberty, expand educational choice, defend unborn life, protect girls' sports, ban child mutilation at the hands of trans activists in our very own South Dakota healthcare system, and so, so much more. These have been incredible victories for South Dakota families, and in each and every single one of them, Family Heritage Alliance has been there to help lead the way. But these victories do not come easy, and in today's political climate, it takes a whole lot more than just showing up to peer and asking a member for their vote. That's why the work of Norman and Debbie and everyone at FHA has been so, so critical to our cause. FHA is educating legislators and the public both during and out of session with experts on important topics. They are partnering with some of the best bill drafters in the country to draft our legislation. I know FHA is looking to add legal counsel to the team here in South Dakota, which would be a huge asset for our legislative allies as we write pro-family legislation and quickly draft amendments during the crunch of legislative session. FHA is also bringing exceptional witnesses to testify in committee like Chloe Cole. FHA is organizing legitimate grassroots support, coordinating media strategy, engaging in primary and general elections by informing voters about, you know, who really is looking out for families first and peer. And that's just the beginning of the incredible work that FHA does throughout the entire year. You know, sometimes it can feel like our whole culture is just crashing down right before our very eyes. But Norman and the FHA are doing the work every day to stand in the gap, fight the good fight for families, and partnering together with FHA, we can win the culture. So thank you, Norman. Thank you, Family Heritage Alliance, and thank each and every one of you for contributing to further the mission to protect families in our South Dakota way of life. God bless you all. My husband and I have been involved for a number of years and though I know it's uncommon for people our age to be involved in government, it's so important that we are. And as a wife and mom and rancher, it's so easy to get caught up in the mundane life of motherhood and ranching or whatever you choose to do. But it's also just as important to stand up and fight for our children and our faith. So I'm so thankful for people like you who have come out tonight to support and stand up and protect us and protect our children. Some of us have run for office. I mean, I've been a mayor and I ran for the state Senate and you know, narrowly got defeated. Uh, uh, that was many, many years ago and been involved in a lot of boards and commissions and things. But uh, you know, we, we do have other people that represent us and therefore it's important that we support them and we don't just let them stay out there in a vacuum. Do they really know how we're thinking? Do they, uh, uh, do they feel our presence? Do we contribute to them? Do we help them get elected? And uh, if we aren't doing any of those things, and I could say, you know, the, the government we get is the, is the government we give. And, uh, uh, and if we're not involved, what was it Edmund Burke said, uh, you know, the, the, thing for, for bad the only thing for bad government to result is when good people do nothing or do too little. I'm glad I'm able to talk to you about something that has been concerning to me in recent years, primarily because of a history that I have on the matter and that is the culture war. And the fact that it's something worth fighting for. I was one of those people 20 years ago when I was in elected office that believed people when they told me that a compromised position on abortion would be safe, legal, and rare. I also believed them when same-sex marriage was a potential outcome, that civil unions was a reasonable compromise. I think we can all agree now that those two positions were never the compromise position. And people like me fell for that because usually when you agree with somebody on something of importance, 
That's kind of where it ends. You don't fight that every single year if you've agreed on something. But for people who really never intended to compromise and agree on something, some of us abandon that field, that culture war. We're losing it not because we aren't fighting it the right way. We're losing it because we left the field and we never fought it in the first place. So my advice to you tonight is to seek compromise when you can, but don't trust people that are going to lie to you that have lied to you before.